Woodstock, it begins. And can you go through that scenario again so we can yeah. understand? Yeah, yeah. So 1900 Woodstock is where it begins. That's where, right around the area where he discards the bicycle and begins running. He runs here on 20th Street. So now he's running, I guess, what's that? Eastbound on 20th Street. And now you got uh, Mercy, we're here at Snyder. Um, I'm sorry, say southbound, <laughs> 20th Street. And so he's now you got Mercy, you have Snyder, and it ends up here. So that's this is the direction, this street here. It's coming this way. So you what group of officers is approaching him from one end, and he runs into this other officer here? Who are, who are coming up the block this way because they're responding to the radio okay. communications of the officers who originally pursued him. More shots are fired at the police car here. At the police car and from the police car. And again, I don't have the distinction yet. And at some point, the civilian collapses. The civilian collapses. He actually fell at the previous location as well but he was able to recover and get up that's why i don't know if he was actually struck by a bullet at the time or, in the, or even we're not sure which and that's what we have to figure out and that's when he's transported presbyterian and he is now dead and he is pronounced yes who shot can, can you, yeah who fired first at that this point we're unsure i don't want to put out something that i have to later walk back but, but both the officer and the male uh, fired weapons so and this will that's uh, something of course we're going to try to find out well, of course we're canvassing the area for video and things like that that would help us and for witnesses that will help us be able to nail that down was his gun recovered with him I believe so. I will have more definitive. Uh, I know it would have been recovered. I'm not sure where was it in proximity to him. If, so your question was was recovered with him. Don't know if it was stolen his person. So let me let me make sure we know that answer before we get in. 48 years old male. Don't have a name on him yet. So the officers observed him. They weren't called here. No, no. They, this is their beat. This is their beat. They observed him. They saw what they believed to be a firearm coupled with the, the wrong way, one way. But again, it's more of a firearm. And, and they attempted to stop him. He flees. And while he's running, they see that he's now transferred whatever it is in his pocket that they believe was a firearm, which turned out to be one, uh, to his uh, to his underneath his shirt. And that's the position he's in when he's running from the first officer I described, the first set of officers. Talk to us about that vehicle right there. I and mean, we look at that. That is a dramatic scene. That Yes, that's why I positioned you here so you can see that as well. And again, I'm not trying to state it one way or the other because we haven't figured out which way those are coming. We know the officers did fire from the vehicle, but what we don't know is every one of those bullet holes that you see are the officer's gun or the uh, civilian's gun. Were any officers hit? No. No officers uh, injured, uh, at least not by gunfire. Fire. I'm sure adrenaline and stuff is still up, so, you know, we'll look at sprained ankles or something like that sometime down the line. But in terms of gunshots, no. What can you tell us about the officers that chased them down? New, veterans? Uh, I don't know. They're both, they're, uh, all four, the first two, as well as the second two, are assigned to the first district. I don't have their time of service yet. Um, it, again, this is so new, and I'm, you know, we're trying to get information. But certainly by the time we put our first announcement in print, which will be in the next, you know, forthcoming hours, we'll have at least those, uh, th that bit of information nailed down. Right. 19th and Woodstock, right in that area. So it's way down, it's way down that way. So. I just over that they saw something they thought was a gun. So if it, let's say they didn't know whether it was, he may have had a permit to carry that. So what would have been wrong with that? Well, we would have to find out if he did. So you, it, you know, you, you still would be able to stop him to ascertain that information. That happens a lot where the person does have a firearm and they cooperate and they have a permit and, and then they would just document that, that this encounter took place and that, that, that the uh, legal requirements were met and then that person would be on their way. Unfortunately, that's not what happened here. He definitely fired a shot. Here and down there, yes. But we don't know, I, I don't have a numerical count for you, Chris, to know how many and, if, you know, and how many, both locations. Because we do have fire, uh, shell cases consistent with both. But again, we're going to do a, forensic, a, you know, a very diligent forensic analysis to be able to determine how many and which ones came from whose gun. And we'll be able to give that out, not, not, not next day or two, but at some point that will become uh, more of a certainty than it is my speculation right now. Do you have video? We're canvassing for a video right now. Um, the, as you can see, the investigators are still here. Uh, hopefully, yeah. again, that video and independent witness accounts will certainly aid us in uh, you know, tightening up and being more sure-footed about the things that I'm telling you now.